Hi guys, I'm Sean Dobson. Welcome to Bikes and Bushcraft. Hey guys, we're back again with another video. This is going to be a five minute shelter video. This is pretty much my standard configuration when I'm out doing my bushcraft thing on the this bike. This kit provides everything that I need to affect my core temperature control and my survivability should I be injured, hurt, or just want to do some general bushcraft. This is all going to be done in less than five minutes. Go ahead and look at the timer on the bottom bar and you can keep me on it. Here we go. Now guys, one of the big things about this is not necessarily moving fast, it's just being deliberate about your actions. Once I'm done with this, I'll go back in and show you a little more detail as far as what knots I used and things of that nature. And normally that just drops off there, but since I'm doing an uncut YouTube video for the five minute shelter, of course everything's not going to be perfect. But that's the way it is. <clears throat> so we'll set the tarp down there. We got our tent peg. I'm going to walk over here. And I have a bow line on the end of the 550 cord. And that bow line always stays in the 550 cord. I'm going to come around this tree, pull my tag line back through. And where I want this, guys, is right about high chest level. Okay, so I'm going to adjust this real quick. Now, I'm just going to let that sit. I'm going to come up, make a complete loop. See that right there? Grab and pull. Okay, now when I pull that loop against that side, it doesn't come untight. All right. I'm going to take my tag line, feed it through that loop, pull back tight. Okay. Pinch. Wrap one time through to form a half hitch. And I'm going to leave that loop out. Okay. This is a pressic. The way that we tie a pressic is you take that loop, much like this one here, you lay it over the line, pass it through itself once, twice, three times, and then pull the center. Okay, Guys, when you tie your pressics, make them neat. They work a lot better. Uh, any of you guys that are into rappelling or rock climbing, anything like that, um, if you're working with rope, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to slide that pressic down here. We're going to take and expand our tarp. And at the four corners of this tarp, I have loops tied to them. Okay, I'm going to take one tent stake. And normally, if I have the black ones like I have here, I'm going to take those tent stakes and I'm going to put them up top because the yellow ones are easier to see. So I pass my loop through my half hitch loop. I've got the tent stake up here. I pull it tight, which of course I hold it tight on the knot, which will actually hold it before the uh, tent stake. I pull it down tight, tighten that, and that's not going anywhere. So I'll grab another tent stake, come over to my presser, pass the loop through the other loop, add the tent stake, slide the pressic down so the pressic stays taut. Now you have your ridge line, the front of your tarp. I'm going to grab my other four tent stakes, come to the back side, pass the tent stake through the loop, catch the stake, sink that into the ground, Pass it through the other side. Take that into the ground and then dress it up. 
and now I have my five minute shelter. Now in warmer weather guys, where I'm going to want some air to pass through, I'm going to leave that opening at the bottom. If it's cold, I'm going to send it all the way to the ground and kick some snow up on it. Most likely I can use the snow inside the sheltered area to push it back to form an additional barrier for the back of the shelter. So as you can see, you can sit in here. It's at a steep enough angle, it's going to sheet water off very well. If I wanted to, I have a small log in front of me. It's not a perfect reflector wall, but it will reflect some of the heat. I could start a small fire here, and uh, we'd be good to go. If it's raining, and that's the reason why you're building this shelter, you need to be careful and make sure you have nothing above you that's going to fall in the storm, okay? Those are called widow makers. All right, I've got plenty of wood around here to collect from any fire that I may need to make. Water probably is not going to be a concern with this type of shelter because this is going to be a quick shelter from the elements, okay? This uh, reflective surface will reflect heat back to you. So when you start that small fire out here, it comes, it hits that, and it aids in maintaining your core temperature control. Another thing that you can do, if you want to start that small fire here, you can work on your fire lay inside your shelter. Once you're ready to go out and start that fire, you can pull the tent peg from the back, flip the shelter over, get your fire started, and flip it back over so you have It can be pretty difficult to start a fire in the rain, as most of us know. If you haven't done it, I encourage you to and we are going to do it on this channel um, because I believe that I should show you everything I feel I need to know. Okay, again, it helps me make sure that my skills are where they need to be. Guys, I appreciate you joining me for this shelter. I'm going to go ahead and show you the knots and the uh, teardown and uh, we'll go from there. Okay guys, so this is the first side that we set up with the trucker's hitch. So the way that you tie the trucker's hitch and we're going to undo this here real quick. One of the nice things about tying this is you can always flatten your 550 cord back out or whatever cordage you're using. Whenever you have cordage in a survival or self-reliance situation, you don't want to tie a knot that you can't get out. Okay. So what we do is we make a full loop. Okay. We take that loop. We grab and we pull, okay? So now, no matter how hard I pull from the other side, it's not going to let go, but I can pull that and it'll pull right out, okay? So now we have the tag end coming from around the tree. I'm going to take that tag end and pass it through the loop that we formed in the uh, ridge line. And I'm going to ratchet back on it just like that okay <clears throat> I'm going to take and pinch that point make another loop reach down and pull my tag through okay make a loop reach down pull a tag through and it's a half hitch okay now if you're going to stay here what I would recommend is you just pull your tag line up just like that and this is if you're just going to use this tarp as a ridge line not necessarily for a five minute shelter you can pass your excess through okay where you've made that nice and neat you just pull down on that and everything's nicely bundled right there it's not going to pull out and you've got your ridge line this is the same ridge line I would make for my standard shelter configuration for my other tarp. Okay, not just the five minute shelter. So we pull that out, pull, it releases. Yep, gotta pull that tag line out. And now we've just got just a standard cord. This loop is not a permanent loop because different configurations, uh, if this bush was farther out, then my loop would be farther out to slide my shoulder over. Okay, we'll uh, go to the other side 
and uh, I'll show you how to tie a quick bow line. Okay guys, so I'm going to show you how to tie a bow line. What you want to do, take and you have your, your lines crossed, pinch there, you come through the back side, around that trunk line, back up through, okay? You grab the loop that you made first, you cinch down nice and tight, that pulls through, dress the knot, and you have a bow line, okay? What that allows is for whatever it's tied through, whether it be additional rope or the end of the bow, which would be simulated here, and it, uh, it allows for a straight pull. Okay, that's going to keep your knot, that side tension out of it, and you see how tight I pulled that. I turn it over, pull that loop down, this up, and everything comes out. Simple as that. Okay, great way to maintain your cordage, guys, and uh, keep everything affordable. Okay, guys, so here we are at our ridge line. We have our pressic loop. So to tie that loop, all you have is a uh, loop that you made with a piece of 550 cord. You bring it up and pass it through itself. You do that three times, okay? And keeping it neat is a lot better than making it sloppy. However, even a sloppy pressic is going to work, okay? Um, We'll do some uh, repelling videos here later. Uh, I've got some nice spots for that. And you will see the pressic loop again, especially when you see my daughter repelling because she's not allowed to repel without a pressic on her leg to hold the rope as a safety. You can also use a pressic to climb rope. You need to have the uh, cord smaller than the rope you're climbing, but we'll show that later. But that is your simple pressic loop. Any side pressure, in either direction will lock that pressic into place, but it can slide up and down that line with no problem. All right, guys, so that's the pressic. Guys, I hope you were able to gain some knowledge from this, some new skills to practice, and uh, we'll see you next time. Be safe on those bikes and in the bush. Have a great day.